when you started, uh, when, when you were appointed to the Constitutional Court, uh, with your experience and, and background in using land law, labour law for, for human rights purposes, did, what was your, um, what do you think the Constitution was going to achieve? Um, well, of course, I think that our first concerns were that the um, that the constitutional court would be overwhelmed. That the um, amount of work that had to be done to undo the framework of apartheid legislation would mean that they would take some time, and that there would be a lot of challenges to legislation through the constitution, which would mean that it would be a, the court would be overburdened. That didn't actually happen. Um, I think that we all realised that um, this constitution was not going to result in an instantaneous change in South African society. Um, uh, you know, famously, um, uh, the last part of the 1993 constitution, the, the epilogue or the um, postamble, as some people rather inelegantly <laughs> refer to it as, um, uh, talked about the constitution being a bridge to a, a fairer society. and. I think it was a recognition that this was a transitional project that would take time. So I don't think any of us were particularly um, uh, sort of hopeful that we would see a dramatic change. But I think we all felt that the, the court and the um, constitution were going to play quite a big role in um, the project of establishing and developing a, a new democratic um, sort of free and equal South Africa. I think we did realise that. Uh, and Makwanyana, I think, is one of those examples where uh, African traditional law uh, was also um, invoked uh, as being con entirely consistent with the international principles that you were you were lying, laying down. Exactly. So the principle of Ubuntu, which is the principle that um, underpins uh, um, uh, many of the rules of African customary law, which is that I am a person because you are a person, so it recognises the interrelationship between individuals and society, was invoked by several of my colleagues in their judgments to point out that um, in traditional African communities, uh, the death penalty was not a, a, a recognised form of punishment. One of the things that was indisputable in the South African Constitution was that the Constitutional Court had the duty of declaring any law or conduct that was inconsistent with the Constitution to be invalid. The Constitution said it in two separate places, Section 2 and Section 174, and we could not, therefore, avoid that obligation of declaring legislation or conduct that was inconsistent with the Constitution invalid. That, of course, marks out a very different conception of the separation of powers mm. than that that underlie jurisdictions of embrace parliamentary sovereignty. What do you think the difference is between the role of an advocate and the role of a judge? Well, of course, the role of an advocate is in the in the first instance to represent their client. Um, the uh, advocates, of course, live in this complex space between the private interest of their clients and their duty to the court. So, at times, that is a um, that is a, a, an uncomfortable space. Mm. But those twin responsibilities um, mark it out as separate, I think, to the role of the court, where a judge effectively has a duty to the court and to the law and no conflicting duty. So I think there's um, uh, an eth a, 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 in some ways a clearer ethical responsibility for judges. How important do you think it is that lawyers, not just judges, but uh, practicing lawyers, uh, approach the rule of law seriously? I think it's crucial. Um, I really very strongly believe in the ethical responsibilities of lawyers. I've spoken earlier about this idea that I think that all practicing lawyers dwell in that um, space between the private interests of their clients and their responsibility to the um, legal system, to the courts, to the idea of the rule of law, and that it's very difficult when courts are under attack for them to defend themselves. So I think that the legal profession bears an enormous responsibility to protect not only courts when they are attacked, um, but also to protect the rule of law when it's under pressure.